You all are like a, a, a cool mix because this word Hispanic is a really complex word, right? You know, you're really working at trying to figure out how this is part of your identity, how being Hispanic is part of your identity, because it is. So let's, let's do this. Can you all, first off, here's a list of words. These are terms that we use to identify people who would be, anybody who could really be up here. Um, can you tell us just what do they mean? Who is Latin American? What's that mean? When someone is Latin American, what's it mean? Someone with ancestry from, I would say, Central and South America. Um, I've heard it be used for both people who live in Central and South America and also people with ancestry who live elsewhere, whether in the United States or abroad somewhere else. How about Hispanic? Who's Hispanic? Um, I would say people from Mexico and Central America, that part of... What about South America? Yes, South America too. Anywhere. Okay, but, but, is, but is she Hispanic? Um, no. Are Brazilians Hispanic? I would say... Yes, they're a form of Hispanic. All right, somebody else, somebody else want to jump in? Bro, anyone? It might be Spanish speakers coming from Latin America. Yeah, yeah. Any, it's anybody de deriving their, their heritage from Spain, from Spanish-speaking motherland of Spain. So that is not Brazil, okay? Um, and it is all this area right here, right, are Hispanics. Okay, American. Who's American? Um, I was from the United States. Americano. Okay, let me say this. Los Americanos. Quien, quienes son? Uh, us and also from South America. Okay, where else? I say Mexico too. It's, it's any of it, man. It's all the Americas, right? All of this here is the Americas. Right, so anybody can, anybody, so a lot of times here in the United States, like we talk about, um, why can't we all just be Americans? Listen, man, any, ca Canadians are Americans. It's North America. This, the U.S. is North America. Mexico is North America. It's all the Americas. So Los Americanos, the Americans would be everybody. Okay, West Indian. Who are West Indians? Man, you got this. I can jump in here. It's like... Jamaican, Trinidadian, Tobago, um, Barba from Barbados, well, like and like kind of maybe all the non-Spanish speaking Caribbean islands. I yeah, guess. okay. Uh, yeah, so listen. So there's 7,000 islands in the Caribbean about, including all the little ones, right? And do you know why we say West Indian? It's the idea that when Columbus came this way, he had the idea that he was going to search for India. And when they, when he land, when they landed, they had the idea that they were in India. But India of the West, West India. So hence West Indians, right? Okay, Caribbean, we, we already have Caribbean, this whole area here. How about Afro-Caribbean? What's Afro-Caribbean? What's the difference between Caribbean and Afro-Caribbean? Um, I'm not sure. So. Is she Afro-Caribbean or is she Caribbean? Um... I'd say Afro-Caribbean. All right. So the idea is the Afro-Caribbean refers to the black population in the Caribbean, people who trace their ancestry to sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, white or los blancos or brancas, who are they? From Spain, Europeans, right? So, okay, then you have black negros, okay? Then you have los indios. Do you know where, the in where are the Indians from, dude? John, do you know? Who are Los Indios? Where'd they come from? I'm sorry, I have no idea. Really? Yeah. Are Alana? they indigenous people? Oh yeah, okay, where'd they come from? I don't, they, they were already there. What's that? Were, they were already there. Yeah, or, well, they weren't there from the very beginning, but okay, so where'd they come from though? Probably also Africa at some point. Oh man, come on. All right, hang on, we'll come back to that. All right. So you think you have Latino, Latina, Latin X. Can somebody explain the difference? Can some of you explain can someone explain to the class what the difference is? Um okay. 
So uh, Spanish is a gendered language, as m most of you probably know. Um, Latino is the Spanish like term, I guess, referring to male, quote unquote, um, uh -huh. people with Latin American heritage. Latina is the same for female. And then Latinx is a term that I think has many different definitions, but I think that uh, two that I really like that I've heard are, one, it's gender neutrality, and, which shows support to a lot of LGBT uh, Latinx people because they're very marginalized. And also, uh, I've heard it be described as to show solidarity to other social movements in a similar, term, in a similar way that Malcolm X omitted his last name. Sorry, dude. Okay, hang on. I, I've never heard that before. That's like you, wo this woke generation coming up with shit that I'm just I, I like, can tell you about a professor at the school who told me about that one. Yeah, all right, man. Okay, well, professors can be woke too, but like, ah, uh, fuck. All right. So here, let me go back to the masculine thing. Spanish is a gendered language. So when you don't know or when you're going to group men and women together, it's like saying mankind for men and women. So like, all, if, I'm, if I'm referring to all people, I say mankind. I don't say womenkind, because womenkind only means women. So men have created this language around this sort of masculine identity and masculine way of being. So it's the same in Spanish. When you want to just refer to a large group of people, you use the masculine. So like, and, okay. So, uh, but people came up with this the idea of like, well, let's just break that up and not use the masculine or the feminine, let's use X. The problem is nobody in Latin America uses X. Nobody says Latinx. And very few people here in, in the US actually say Latinx. But college students like to say it, and universities like to do it, because we like to be the bastions of progressivity, even, though, even if we don't really know what that means. So there's this idea, you might hear Latinx, but no one's really using that, it hasn't really caught on. But nonetheless, I think it's more of an American term, though. Yeah, it is. And I think it also like refers to like people of Hispanic or Latin heritage or whatever who also don't speak Spanish necessarily, because yeah. that's a very large population in yeah. the United States. And I, like, though I agree, it's probably not like at this very moment widely accepted in a societal context. I think like the more it's studied and like the more it's understood as like an American term. It'll Dude, it, it might take off, man. It's yeah. awesome, right? It's really interesting. No, it's definitely okay. really interesting. Yeah, no, it might. Okay, so listen, North America is Canada, the US, and Mexico. Mexico is part of North America. Here is Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Panama. And then South America is Colombia and Venezuela on down. In Spanish, if you talk about someone being Spanish, Spanish people, when we talk about Spanish, we're really talking only Spain, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, man, can we go to the next slide? Um, can, you guys, can you guys tell me where these women are from? Do you have any idea who's who? I'm gonna go with American Indian. American Indian? Upper left. Upper right? Oh, upper right. Um, Eastern China. Okay. Lower right? East Siberia. Lower right is, you're going to say Eastern Siberia? Oh, wait, lower right would be Andes. Yeah, you think so? Okay, and lower left? East Siberia. Did, you know, you, you, did, you got two, right? Okay, so here's the idea. Let me just go. First off, she, she's, Quech, she's Quechua. She's, I, don't, I don't remember where I grabbed her picture, either from Peru or Ecuador. She's Eastern Chi from Eastern China, the one in the upper right. She is Navajo, um, American Indian, and she is uh, from the Ket people of Siberia, okay? So if, can you go to the next slide? So here's the idea, right? You, you didn't have the answer to this, but so when we think about population migration, you know, we all start right here and we start moving out, that the Americas were populated by people coming over from ultimately China, Eastern Siberia, and down into the Americas. So if we go back, so see right here, this is the key. The people right here and the people right here have basically the exact same DNA. So all of these women are gonna pretty much look a lot like one another because they're all coming from the, this, the, the populations of, of ancestry population from right here. 
okay? So this is really important when we think about the indigenous peoples of the America. When you go, when you look at the difference, like when you, you collect DNA in North America or in Northern Mexico, it's the same. People, it's the same people, right? Okay, uh, also, let me show you this. Understanding who the Afro-Caribbeans are. The Hispanic is a sociological term not a biological term. Hispanic doesn't refer to a racial category. When we talk about racial categories, we're talking about genetic or biological distinctions between population groups. Hispanic is sociological distinctions between population groups, okay? So the, the South America, Central America, and then Mexico is populated by people, the indigenous peoples who came across the Bering Strait populated by the Europeans who came down, especially the Spanish and the Portuguese, right? And they're also populated by sub-Saharan Africans during the slave trade. So these are all slave ports. So the Afro-Caribbean population, for example, the African or the black population, or as we say in Spanish, you would say los negros, is a very large population. And so if you go like to the eastern side, say in Ecuador, I was in this little town, it's a city, medium-sized city actually, by now called Esmeraldas. And the moment you go into Esmeraldas, it's just, these are the ancestors of slaves. It's, and you know that you're no longer, you're in a very unique place because Esmeraldas was a slave port. And so what you have is the Latinos, so, or Hispanic Latinos, the whole region is populated by people who are indigenous, who have, have indigenous blood, have white blood, and have black blood as African blood. And so it's, all, it's a mixture of lots of different population groups, okay? It's a sociological category. So we make a mistake sometimes when we say like, hey, you know, you, you, know, you apply to Penn State and we ask you, what's your ancestry? And then we offer white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, Pacific Islander, etc. Once we throw Hispanic in there, we've changed the game completely because we're now talking about race categories, biological categories, but we're mixing it up with sociological categories. <laughs> <laughs>